Okay, question three to ten. We gave you a uh, gene R uh, sequence here. So I just highlight it and copy it. Go back to APE, uh, a new sequence, paste it. Oh, oh how did that happen? Uh, let me do this again. Uh, Maybe if I highlight the header information, it asks me to. Yeah, it asks me to save it. So I'm going to save it uh, on uh, on my default folder. Okay. So this is in our wild type CDS APE. Okay. And then uh, go back to highlight uh, again the second one. This will be mutant one. This is in our mutant one. And then go back, say, uh, gene R mutant 2. Go back to ATE. <coughs> okay, so I have three sequences. Uh, uh, <coughs> let me uh, close this uh, um, uh, not useful one. Okay, so I have sequenced the uh, wild type mutant one two uh, for gene R, and look at the first question. Uh, oh, uh, first question: gene R is most likely from what? Uh, well, so the easiest way to do this, we go to wild type, and then uh, you just uh, we know this open reading frame, so let's just translate this into protein. And then you just highlight the whole thing, do a blast search. <laughs> Why did that happen? <laughs> uh, okay, so if you don't translate, you have to use nucleotide blast. Uh, usually, do protein blast is more accurate, so I'll just po post there. And non redundant protein, and, just, and then just uh, blast. So. Ah, it's oh. It, it shows this is something kind of a uh, kindness HSP ninety acting seventeen. <coughs> so basically, this is a testing of your. Uh, you know how to when to use a blast. If you tell you to use blast, everyone will know. But. It will give you a question. You have to if you have to decide. This is a question you can use blast to answer. That's the really the key. So, well, I don't know why it takes so long, but <coughs> okay. But basically, use blast to answer the first question, and then encode the protein. How long? Uh, if you could go back to the APE, you will see protein four four nine amino acid. Four four nine amino acid. Uh, so. Okay. Then we give you a pair of uh, PCR primers, alpha and beta, and, <coughs> and how long this fragment will be. We actually even gave you a tutorial video here, and this year we we are not doing this. You you have to find your own tutorial video. Uh, so there's no tutorial video link on the exam. You have to know where to find it. So. Okay, so well, uh <coughs> let's first start find out the first primer. Oh. Well, in this year, we, we actually make it very easy for you. We, we even tell you this is a forward primer. So, I know. <coughs> so, go back to wild type. Uh, let's uh, find that sequence. We see it. Yeah, that's there. And then go to a feature, new feature. That's our forward primer. And then go back to the question, find out the backward primer. Go back to APE, find again. Aha, uh -huh. 
So except this time you will notice this is a back uh, in a, on the re reverse complementary strain. So feature, new feature, and this one you should select reverse complement. There. So that's two primer, and you highlight this two primer. Uh, it's actually already tell you this is length 686. Uh, 686. So if you are not sure, you can copy the entire thing, put in a new sequence, and that's very clear, it's 686. So that's this question. And then the next question is, uh, if you want to cut it with attack one, how many fragments do you see? So <coughs> we put this fragment here, and then go to an enzyme selector, attack one, T, A, Q. Attack one, there. And then do a digest the run. Right, we should see three fragments because it cut twice. So, so three because this is a fragment you cut twice should be three. If it's if we give you a plasmid, it's a circular. You cut twice, you should see two fragments. That's so uh, circular and uh, linear. This is uh, most uh, common mistake when student made a mistake, that's one of the most common mistakes. Okay, so that's number six. Number five, uh, number seven, sorry. The mutant, mutant one is what? So then close this one, close this one. Yeah. Actually, uh, our blast should come back now. Yeah, blast come back now. So what is that? Psychometric therapy is it's a, uh, yeah, 99%, 100% identity. So. That's what the, the blast tells you. It actually match to most of the sacramental therapies in here. Yeah. That's basically the blast result show. Okay. Let's uh, look at uh, this question again. So, <coughs> and if you want to identify the mutation uh, in between a wild type and a mutant one, uh, so first do an alignment. Align two sequences. Um, put a wild type on top. Mutant one at the bottom. Uh, I'm going to use 50 for the alignment width. So, uh, where is that mutation? Ah, here. Mutation is right here. So, like, this looks like it's a point mutation somewhere. Um, not sure yet. It could be a nonsense mutation, um, but it looks like just one base pair change. So this is around where, uh, 51, 60, 70, 80, it looks like uh, 1,082, it's a nucleotide, 1,082, uh, we actually give you a trap, and this is not 1,082 M2I, this is a nucleotide, and we ask you the nature is actually based on protein sequence, so if you pick 1,082, that's Clearly is a trap. G2T. This is clearly a, a, a decoy. You shouldn't go after that. So G2T. Uh, that's not uh, the, the the mutation is uh, what? That's the is look at the top. That's a wild type. That's T. Okay. So this is clearly a wrong one. So yeah, this is just a decoy. Uh, Okay, so well, and we then the next thing we we know uh, we should translate the two into protein. So this is a wild type. Oh no, uh, not right. I, I well, I should translate the whole thing. Uh, okay, that's a wild type, and then you go to the mutant one. Translate the mutant one. Also select everything. Translate everything. Okay, that's the mutant. So I'm going to select the wild type one, copy, and then where should I go? Yeah, class. <coughs> so by default, class to say align without numbers. I'm going to say al align with numbers. So put wild type first. And then mutant one. Go back to IPE, find out the window 
Newton the one translation. Okay, select everything. Copy back to cluster window. Make sure you use cluster header there, Newton one, and paste there. So <coughs> submit. Very good. And then show by colors. There. That's the mutation right here. So 360, 361. So this is actually, we made it very easy for you. Uh, M2R, M361R. Uh, there. M361R. You make sure wild type at the left. Uh, mutant and on right, so R six to M not to be a wrong one. So. Okay, so <coughs> that's the question number seven. Now, question number eight: the mutation in, in gene two is the same. We do the same thing again and go back to ATE. Uh, this time, except we are now looking at a mutation number two. Align two sequence, uh, put the wild type on top, mutation number two at the bottom. Align again. <coughs> ah, mutation is here. <coughs> 1250, 1260, 123. 1263 mutation from wild type A to G. That the top should be wild type, that's right. So go back to APE again. 1263 in the nu nucleotide. Huh. So it looks like uh, this is A1263G in the nucleotide sequence, but is there a change in amino acid sequence or not? I'm not sure. I need to double check. It could be changed, it could be not. But definitely not G to A if you go back. The top one is a wild type A, the bottom one is mutant G. So it is 1263. Uh, so this is really a tricky question, uh, but as long as you keep your head clear, you shouldn't have a problem with it. So again, we are going to align the wild type. Uh, we have to first translate the wild type first. Uh, select everything, uh, open reading frame, translate, wild type. So, and then go back to the mutant uh, two and select everything, also translate. And then we need to put this into a uh, class door again. So, can we go back to the input form? Okay. So, again, uh, too bad it doesn't save the previous result. We have to do the everything again. So Windows wild type uh, translation. That's wild type. Okay, mutant two now. Go back to APE. No window mutant two translation. So highlight goes back to cluster omega. Okay, M again make sure select align with members and submit. There is uh, another way to do this question. If you really know the reading frame, you can actually check the uh, genetic uh, codon table, see whether the two codon are the same or not. Uh, but that's a little, you have to really keep your head uh, straight to do that. Um, so look at the alignment, it's a li maybe a little easier. So colors, so 1263, that's uh, 641. Right. Uh, <coughs> If you look at the question, <coughs> 1263 divided by 3, that's 421. So all we need to do is just look at the position 421 in the alignment side. So <coughs> position 421, E to E, they are identical. Yeah. So this is a silent mutation. So I go back uh, to well, Moodle. <coughs> Yeah, basically, it's 
changing new class sequence but no changing amino acid sequence. Um, this E421D is also a decoy uh, that don't even exist. Okay, so that's number eight. And then we look at question number nine. Which restriction enzyme can be used to distinguish wild type from mutant number two? So <coughs> now uh, we again look for the difference between. Okay, so here's the alignment of wild type <coughs> versus mutant number two. So the top is wild type, bottom is mutant. So what should I do? Ten on the left and ten on the right, flanking the mutation region, and then check the restriction enzyme that can cut differently between the two strands. Okay, so I'm going to pick ten on the left. Uh, I, I'm not going to do that exactly. I'm just pick long enough to cover it. So I, from the start to this star, that's easy to remember. Copy that and go back to any found out the AB cutter. Uh, Right, so this is my wild type. Submit. Then I'm going to open a new window. Uh, I need to cut it again. This time, I have to make sure remember this is mutant number two. So bottom from star, beginning to the star. And this is mutant number two. And submit. Okay, so all we need to do is just compare these two figures. Uh, well, the trick is the uh, wild type on left, mutant on left. If you go back to uh, AP, APE, you're right. they give you four choices. You can basically pick by elimination. Is equal R1 going to work? Uh, Oh, there's an eco R1 here. Actually, it looks like eco R1 cut left but not right. So, well, eco R1 seems to be <laughs> working. <laughs> uh, all right, but then let's make sure the rest of them are wrong. So, FSPE1. FSPE1 cut left, also cut right. So, that's a wrong one. Okay. Eco R4. Uh, Eco R4. I don't see it uh, on the left. I don't see it on the right, so that's a nonsense one. Okay, ignore Eco R4. They go 2 or they go 3. Actually, is that 3? Uh, that's a B, G, L, 2 or 3. Anyhow, but uh, let's pick. Uh, I don't see big O one, big O two or big O three. I don't see big O two. So it look like yeah, equal R one is working. So okay, so this is actually the answer should be randomly shuffled. It's just somehow the correct one is the A. Yeah. So okay, that's A equal R one. The last one is probably the most challenging question. So we gave you four primers: Charlie, Delta, Elephant, Falcon. Uh, um, I must really like animals. Uh, sorry, that. Okay, I know. So we give you four primers, and and then we ask you which of the above, which pair of the above primer can we use to amplify a PCR fragment contain the mutation in mutant one. Uh, we go back to the AP again. So we don't need a mutant two anymore. Let's just close it. Uh, so we need to look at the uh, alignment between mutant one and two, uh, yeah. and then decide uh, which primer is going to work. So, well, uh, it's much easier to work on the mutant in this case. And uh, we know the mutation position is 50, 60, 70, 80. The mutation is in 10,082 from T to G, 10,082. So I'm going to jump to edit, uh, jump to 10,082. That's a G. And then I'm going to label that, say feature, new feature, 
I'm going to call this one. This is the mutant one. Mu uh, maybe mute one. Okay. And make it clear. Put it a red color. Okay, that's my mutation uh, in mutant one. And then uh, go back to AP. Found out the primer Charlie. This is a tricky question because we didn't tell you whether it's forward or backward. So, <coughs> find, okay. Now you need to compare them to decide which is a forward or backward primer. This is TCA, GGT. This is a forward primer. Okay. So, feature, new feature, this is primer Charlie. And this is a forward primer. And go back to for primer delta. And find again CGA. Well, this is a reverse complementary sequencing. So this is this is on the uh, reverse complementary stream. So feature new feature. This is primer delta. Click reverse complement. So green for backward. Uh, Spellman blue for forward. And then look for primer elephant. Uh, Go back to APE, search again. GCT. This is also a backward uh, primer. So go back to feature. And this is elephant. And reverse complement. Okay, that's primer elephant. And primer falcon. Uh, <coughs> GTT, this is also on reverse complement. You can actually look at the GTT, it goes the other way around. So, so this is Falcon, reverse complement. Well, and then you can just look at the map, uh, graphic map, and see which primer can cover the mutation region. We had a mutation one here. Primer Elephant, Falcon, Delta, and Charlie. And actually, I only see one pair of primer, Charlie and Elephant. Right. So without even looking at all, and you can look at the map and know only one pair are going to work. Primer Elephant and Primer Charlie. There's no other choice here. But let's go back to the question and see whether Charlie, Delta, Charlie, Delta is not going to work. Uh, Charlie Elephant, yeah, Charlie Elephant going to work, right? Uh, Delta Falcon, Delta Falcon is not even a valid PCR primer. They all goes to one direction. This doesn't, this PCR doesn't even work. Uh, Elephant and Falcon, Elephant Falcon also doesn't work. So there, so yeah, the only one pair, Elephant and Charlie, going to, that pair going to work. So okay, so that's the. Uh, I'm going to stop the. Recording and